So maybe you've been in a narcissistic relationship. Maybe you've been with someone who has those narcissistic personality traits, um, has that gaslighting, manipulating, uh, they've been lying, they've been cheating on you for multiple years, from multiple people. Like Maybe all that's going on. And all of a sudden, it starts to come to the surface. All of a sudden, you start to realize what's going on. You get to the place where you have awareness of, hey, this isn't just a jerk. Like This is someone who's actually been manipulating me been isolating me from my friends and family, been isolating me from people that are gonna tell me the truth, that are gonna point out the red flags. And this person has really been manipulating a lot of my perspective of life. See, typically when this happens, people start realizing and they get to the place, once they get to the place of awareness, they start realizing like, hey, I need to try to help this other person to get awareness. I need to try to help this person to grow and to change. Oftentimes, that's never gonna happen. Oftentimes people will try and try and try and it's not going to get anywhere because they don't want to. They don't care. All they care about is themselves. So as a result, as you start to learn more about narcissism, as you start to realize like, hey, this actually isn't improving. Like they say they're improving, but it only lasts for about 30 seconds. Then they go back to yelling at me. Then they go back to raging at me in the car. Then they go back to to road rage. Then they go back to throwing things, to screaming, to hitting, like whatever it might be. Like the words and the actions just don't match up. So you get to the place where you're like, hey, I need to set boundaries. Setting boundaries is crucial in any type of narcissistic relationship because if they can't conform to the boundaries that you set, they're not gonna really respect you or anything else in the relationship. You have to remember boundaries have to be accompanied by consequences. Just having a boundary is just something to break. And a lot of times in a narcissist mind, Boundaries are meant to be broken. So as a result, they'll walk up to them and they will try to break those boundaries all the time. A lot of times people set up boundaries in these type of relationships, but they never set up consequences. They never set up, hey, if you're going to yell at me like that, then I am going to walk away. If you're going to cheat on me, then I'm going to divorce you. If you're going to X, Y, and Z. Okay, a lot of times people don't put that. So then you are go th- you go through those opportunities, you go through those boundaries, and you see the narcissist is not paying attention to those boundaries at all. So then you get to the place that you're at a crossroads. I either stay with a person who's abusing me, who's cheating on me, manipulating me, or I go ahead and leave for my own mental health and mental safety. So you decide, hey, I'm going to leave. And then all of a sudden, something seems to change. The narcissist seems to either get nicer, or the narcissist seems to start pleading start crying, start asking you, please don't go, please don't go, I want you to stay. Like, I've been trying to work on us, I've been trying to work on myself, like, we just need to go to counseling. Like, I'll set up an appointment, like, let's go to counseling. Or, you know, maybe we could we could see about reading a book together or like working on our marriage together. Or maybe there's something we could do, but like, please just give me another chance. Like, I'm really trying. Like, can't you see everything that we've been through? Don't you see everything that we've like gone through and how we've developed and like we're better now than what we were before and like all this type of stuff. And you'll hear a lot of these phrases. I'm sorry if I triggered some people here. You'll hear a lot of these phrases over and over in the moment. And all of a sudden you're like, wait, they're actually changing. They actually have empathy. They actually have these thoughts. No. Okay. So when this happens, like one of the phrases I use of like, think of everything we've gone through. (laughs) Okay. Developing and having trauma in the relationship doesn't equal an emotional and mental bond of love. It's completely different. But oftentimes, a narcissist will use past events to be able to trigger you and control you and keep you pulled in. So a lot of times, they will bring up all these different things. Remember what we've done. Remember our love. Remember when we first got together. Like, blah, blah, blah. Like, they'll use anything and everything. And a lot of times, they don't even mean it at all but they'll try to do whatever they can to manipulate and control you to get to the place that you stay. If you guys like what you see here, uh, my name is Ben Taylor. I run Raw Motivations. I would love to be able to talk to you more, whether you're a narcissist and you're struggling with those tendencies or whether you're a victim of narcissistic abuse and you're trying to break free of that trauma bond or you're trying to deal with how do I move on? How do I get to the idea that they didn't care about me, that they didn't love me? Like, How do I continue to grow and develop myself past that? 
If you're interested in that, I would love to talk to you more. Reach out on my website, rawmotivations.com, one-on-ones. Would love to be able to schedule time and talk with you. I'm on this platform to bring awareness about narcissism, about growing, healing, and change in the aspect of a narcissistic relationship. And as a narcissist, I've had to grow, I've had to change everything in my life, and I'm still on that journey. I still have narcissistic tendencies, I still have stuff that I'm working through, so I try to get on this platform and be open and vulnerable and say, hey, this is the change that I wanna be, and this is the change that I'm gonna continue to be every single day as I continue to better myself and grow and be able to help others. So in that narcissistic relationship, you get ready to leave, you get ready to walk out the door, and all of a sudden they're begging and pleading. Maybe it's the first time you've ever seen tears from your narcissist. Growing up, like my family made it almost kind of a joke of like, whoa, like is that a tear I see? Let me put that down in the books. Let me put that on the calendar because it didn't happen. I wasn't someone who shared that emotion. Not at funerals, not at someone dying, not at a dog dying, like not anything. Like I didn't share that emotion with anybody. But I could pull that out if needed, the drop of a hat, if it was going to benefit. A lot of narcissists will manipulate your emotions by pretending to have their own, by pretending to show empathy, by pretending to show feelings, by pretending to show sadness, when in reality, they're just trying to keep you. They're just trying to manipulate you. They're just trying to hold on for a little bit longer, either for their ego or so they can fabricate a story of why you're actually leaving. Another huge reason why a narcissist or a toxic person will try and fight for the relationship at the very end. It was so good. Please don't leave. I don't want you to leave. I want us to work out. One of the family, blah, blah, blah. Like another reason why they try at the last minute, the last possible second, so that they can look like the victim. You see, what's going to happen is you're gonna stand up for what's right. You're gonna stand up for your mental and your emotional health and safety, and you're gonna leave the narcissist. And then that narcissist is gonna beg you. They're gonna beg you not to leave. They're gonna say, I don't want you to leave, like all this type of stuff. And then you leave, and then they're gonna turn around. They're gonna go to their family, to their parents, to their friends, and they're gonna say, I tried. Like, I really tried. Like she was walking out the door and I said, please don't go. I suggested, hey, let's go get counseling. I suggested we should read a marriage book. I suggested we should work on the relationship. And I said, like, don't you remember all these things we've been through? She just left. She left me. I didn't want that. I wanted us to work out. What happens here is if the narcissist wanted the relationship to work out, then they would have put in the time, energy, love, and care, and affection throughout the entire relationship. And not just bits and pieces and random spikes when it made their gain the best option for them. If you've left the narcissist, stay no contact, work on yourself, grow and develop to be the best person you could possibly be. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please subscribe if you're on a podcast, on Apple, or on Spotify. Like, Please rate some of these episodes. Give me feedback because I'm trying to continue to grow this platform and be able to help bring awareness, growth, healing, and change to people out there.